Hey everyone, this is Kelly Smallman with Pretty Presets. Um, I just wanted to do a video tutorial today um, using kind of a crossover between Pretty Presets and Pretty Actions. Um, I use the two sets a lot when I'm working with headshots. Um, I posted this picture yesterday of a local realtor who wanted headshots, so of course I want to make her look as beautiful as she wants to look, uh, since her face will be all over the place on her business cards, on her yard signs, on social media, um, all that good stuff. Um, before I start, I do want to say, um, even though I'm using the preset Juniper, which I use like all the time, um, you can still use my my thought process with any preset that Pretty Presets offers as far as um, tweaking the presets so that your white balance looks okay on your photo. So I don't want you to be steered away. If Juniper isn't your jam, then you know you could still watch the video and use the techniques for other presets. Okay. So first, what I would do is I go over to my brushes, which is right here, and I use my Skin Smooth brush from the Perfect Portrait brush set, and I just smooth it on her face, just like so. Um, and then I also come down and just do her arm real quick. Um, just so that her skin matches each other. You don't want her face to be super smooth and then look down and see that her arms are blotchy or whatever. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So after her face is done, I can simply click this new button to choose a new brush. The next brush that I'm going to use is the catch lights for, for her eyes. I come over here, I click the fill button, to zoom in. I can easily adjust the brush size with the scroll in the middle of my mouse. And I just go over her pupils ever so lightly. Now if you think that's too bright, don't be afraid to come over here to the exposure slider and tone it down to whatever you think is acceptable. I don't like the eyes to be too crazy, so I do usually drop that exposure down. <clears throat> I just like it to have a little extra sparkle. Okay, so on her particularly, I added an extra step with her eyes, so I click New, and I chose the eye color blue from the portrait brush set as well. And I came over and just enhanced her blues just a little bit. So there we have it. And for now I'm done with the brushes because I already know in my head I'm going back over to Photoshop um, and sometimes the skin smoothing brush in the action set um, is a little stronger than the one in Lightroom, especially after I go in, and here I am, I'm pointing at the screen like you guys can see me, I'm sorry, because I'm going to go in and remove some of these blemishes <clears throat> in actions. We'll get to that later. Okay, so I go back up and I fit my image to the screen. I click Juniper. It's going to enhance all the blue eyes that I just did. It's going to enhance her skin color, um, the background, her dress, all of that. Okay, so she looks pretty orange. She is not going to like that. I don't like it either. So I come over to my temperature and I scoot down um, to the blue. As you can see, that took away a lot of the orange tone. So I'm just going to show you before doing that, where I think a lot of people, I get so many messages and comments on Juniper making your images look orange. So here's the fix. Just go over to the temp and scoot down towards blue. And it's going to make it a much cooler look. 
If that's not enough, where for me right now that is, you can come down to the orange um, color slider and you can use your saturation to, you know, saturate or desaturate the orange um, if that wasn't enough. And after doing that, I decided I'm just going to put that up towards yellow, just a teeny tad. Okay. <clears throat> So there I have it in Lightroom, um, super easy, and she looks great. Um, but since this is a headshot and this is very important to her, I'm going to take it over to Actions because I work a lot better um, in Photoshop for all these flyaway hairs and the um, blemish touch-up. So I'm going to export her. And after exporting, I'm going to take her over to Photoshop. And you guys, I'm running off CS5. I'm not running off of something crazy. Um, I know that a lot of you probably think you need the newest and whatnot, but I don't. I just work off of that. Oh, there's one of her other photos. Okay, so there she is. Now I'm in Photoshop where it's very intimidating. Photoshop, when I first started it, super scary. But I learned the basics and I use that to my advantage um, when just doing these simple things. So first I'm going to come over here to the Band-Aid tool and I always choose Spot Healing Brush just so you know which one I'm using for the newer Photoshop people out there. And I'm going to zoom in, which the shortcut, which I always use, is Control in the plus sign to zoom in and if I hit the space bar down I can drag the photo down to where I'm trying to um, focus on. So I'm just gonna simply click all of these little spots that I think should go away. I will mention she doesn't have freckles but I will mention whenever people have freckles I don't usually take away their freckles. Um, unless it's on myself because <laughs> I don't love my freckles but I'm just gonna sit here and just click away until I feel like I've gotten them all and I always tell people just a little side note when I'm doing this I said they would be mortified if they knew how close I got to their skin right I mean if she was oops, if she was sitting next to me right now she'd probably be like what no one wants to see their face that close. And then I'm just scrolling down, I'm pressing the space bar and scrolling down. I'm just getting all of these little lint pieces off of her dress. Um, just making sure that everything looks good. And then I'm going to control with the minus sign to scroll back out. And I see a little spot on this column here that I'm going to get rid of. And that's my easiest way um, to get rid of blemishes. I don't love to do it in Lightroom. I love Lightroom. Lightroom is my hero, but for blemish removal, it's not my favorite. I usually come over here and just do that spot healing really quick. Okay, so I have my Pretty Actions Pro Skin Smoother, and that is, I moved it up here um, to my mostly used presets but it is in uh, it's in the retouch set I know you can't really read it there but it is there I just moved that up to the top I select it and I'm going up here I'm gonna put the opacity around 75 percent I can always change that over here later if I think it's too much I'm going to make my brush bigger by um, using my bracket shortcut key. I'll actually have to look up the specific name of that because I actually don't know what that key is. It is a bracket. Making the brush bigger and smaller are the two keys next to the letter P. I know, I'm so very technical over here in the Smallman house. Okay. 
So I just smoothed her skin just a little bit more and I can click on and off. You probably through this video can't even see the difference but there is a perfect amount of skin smoothing difference between those two. So I'm going to leave it on there and I'm just going to flatten this. I should be working with masks but I'm not doing that today. <laughs> okay so this is my favorite trick. I have taught it in private message to some of my pretty colleagues. Um, this is my favorite easiest way to get rid of flyaway hairs. Again, I love Lightroom. I think the cloning tool is great, but for this tedious work that I do, I just find it easier in Photoshop. So I am coming over to the clone stamp tool. And what I'm doing is being really picky up here about these little flyaway hairs. Okay, so what I do is I think that this brush size is plenty for what I'm doing. I pick a section of the photo which is just right above the flyaway hairs that have no flyaway hairs. That's going to match that section quite nicely. And I'm going to press down the Alt key and I am going to left click my mouse which means I am selecting this area right here to copy and then I'm going to come down here, I'm going to left click my mouse, and I'm just going to basically paint away those flyaway hairs. And they're gone. How easy was that? Okay, so now I need to select a new part of the photo to clone for these hairs that are over here. So I'm just coming directly across because I want it to match, I'm pressing down the Alt key, I'm left clicking my mouse to select that. I'm lifting up on the keys and I'm scooting over. I'm left clicking and I am painting away those flyaway hairs. That is going to be the easiest way that I do this. Now let's just say for instance this hair right here is annoying her. It's not annoying me. I'm just doing this for fun. I can easily alt click this part of her dress and then come up here and get rid of all those little straggly hairs. Just like that. Okay. So now I've used Lightroom and Photoshop. I used um, the Sugar and Spice collection for the preset Juniper. I used the Perfect Portrait brush set for um, her face and her eyes in Lightroom. Then I scooted over to Photoshop and I used the Pretty Actions Retouch and Makeup set with the Skin Smoother. Um, and then I used the Clone Stamp to clone away those flyaway hairs. And I also used the Spot Healing Tool for her blemishes that were so very tiny. Um, she had great skin, by the way. Um, but this is great also for teenagers, preteens, anybody that has, you know, bad skin. Okay, so this is kind of crazy. She did not like her arm down here. Um, so I'm going to just squeeze that in a little bit with a liquify tool. So I'm going to come up here to filter and liquify. And this is standard on Photoshop. This is not a preset or an action, I should say, for Photoshop. Okay, so I'm choosing the um, warp tool right here. And I'm going to make my brush just a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to push in her arm the tiniest bit because I didn't see anything wrong with it to begin with. But it straightened it out for her makes her happy. She's happy, I'm happy. She's the one paying me. Okay. So there's the before and there's the after. You can see it's ever so slight, but that's what I did. And this is the photo that I posted on uh, Pretty Presets yesterday. So I'd love to hear your comments, questions, anything like that. Um, just feel free to write them in the comments and I'll get back to you. 
um, periodically through the evening, tomorrow, whenever. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, hopefully, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that a lot of you that have been freezing lately are getting some warmer weather today in February. So, again, thank you, and I look forward to seeing you online. Bye.